When it comes to personal development, self-development, the number one thing I've found that people really want to improve and, and just generally struggle with and are frustrated by is focus. Throughout all the years of running my company, Project Evo, which is essentially a company that aims at helping people improve their lives through better understanding themselves, better organizing themselves, using our Evo planner, um, using our elements assessment, you know, really our our unique value proposition that we offer at that company is focus. And what I have found and what has an idea that has been popular, pop popularized, <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun one. An idea that's been really popularized over the last handful of years is that flow follows focus. And I'm obsessed with flow. That's why the show is called flow in general. And uh, I think we all should be obsessed with flow. And the reason for that, first of all, is that According to Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, the godfather of positive psychology, along with Martin Seligman, and really the creator um, of the concept who created, created that word, coined the word flow, it's the optimal state of being. It's one in which we feel our best, we perform our best, but more importantly, I think what's not mentioned enough is the is the being component of it, the spiritual component of it, the alignment component of it. It's very esoteric, that aspect of it, and therefore it's difficult to measure in a controlled environment, in a scientific environment, and therefore it's not discussed very often. But what you find when you talk to people that are in flow is that they're connected. They're connected to what one might call their higher self, to their true selves, to the, to the thing that they maybe worship or, or believe is the source of all life, energy, the universe, everything. So it's this beautiful, ecstatic state, right? So that's what we all want. We all want that because we are aware of our lives and time passing by, and we want to feel connected. We want to feel outstanding and and in a state of bliss while we're here. We want to live our bliss while we are here, right? And so if we want to get there, what we find in this realm of science and psychology is that flow follows focus. And the thing that is most challenging for people in improving and developing themselves in the world of personal development is focus. My company has done so many surveys over the last five years, and every single time, whether they're open question surveys or multiple choice surveys, the thing people want help with the most is focus. Now, this is not new. This is an ancient problem, and it's even a problem that I know has existed at least over the past, say, 30 years, because my friend and mentor, Les Hewitt, the New York Times number one best-selling author of The Power of Focus, knew this. 30 years ago, and he wrote the book on it. Um, and obviously, it became a New York Times bestseller for a reason. Just that title alone draws people in. We have so many books that continue to come out today on the power of focus. So what I want to talk about in this video, in this episode, is how we get there, what I have found works for me and my personal journey with it, and how you can get there a little bit faster and easier and more consistently. I mean, even recently, some of these books that have come out that are extremely popular, uh, like Deep Work by Cal Newport is another great one, or um, some of the work that I've been coming across recently by Nir Eyal, I, I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, but he's the author of Indistractable, and I hope to have him on the show uh, soon. I should probably figure out how to pronounce his name so I don't <laughs> fuck that up. Um, so sorry if you're seeing this in here. But, you know, the idea of being indistractable, the idea of focusing, the idea of deep work, the idea of starving our distractions. We all want it. And another reason I think that we all want it is because we've all experienced it. We all know what it feels like to be fully locked in, in the zone, and do tremendous work. Like you've experienced this where in a two-hour window of time, it feels like 10 hours has gone by. In fact, it feels like time sort of dilates, so you're not sure if it's slowed down or it's sped up. And in that time, regardless of how long it was that you're in the zone, the output, the result of what you create is 10 times what you would normally create in that period of time. And so obviously we're like, 
how the hell do we get back to that? I want more of that. It's like a drug. It could be that you're writing. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in your work. It often happens in sports, in challenging activities like playing a game, like chess or backgammon, um, surfing, you know, or like I said, a sport that you play. And then all of a sudden, you're just in the zone, shooting threes, right? Or me as a soccer player, it's like, suddenly I just take over the game. It's like, I can do anything. I don't make mistakes. Even though it feels like you're constantly right on the edge of a mistake. It's this state where you've completely let go. And the motion or the thought, if you're in a artistic and creative place, is coming through you. It's coming through you and you just seem to need to get out of the way. Like ultimately it seems like that's the job is getting out of your own way. And so my journey with this has been a frustrating one, just like, just like most people's where I play this game with myself, this constant experimentation game of optimizing to be in that state as much as possible. And it is a worthwhile journey. But most recently, as far as my life and my schedule went, I was in a state where I wanted my calendar to have as much white space on it as possible. And I think this is something I picked up from Naval Ravikant, and he probably didn't mean it in this specific literal way. I'm making an assumption here, but he talks about having freedom and white space on his calendar. And I took that as like, no meetings or the least number of meetings possible and having the time and the space to create at my speed on my uh, sort of terms. And it's a wonderful thing because you feel really, really free. And I'm in a blessed position uh, to have been able to do that, uh, being in the position I'm in, running the companies I run, um, being, you know, having the, the autonomy to set my schedule. And I think we're, by the way, we're getting at the point where even if you, um, whatever you're doing, whatever kind of role you're in, um, it's becoming much, much easier to, to do the same thing, to really have that level of autonomy and freedom in, in your role. And so I'm living my life. I'm, I'm, I'm free. And what I find is that, and his whole philosophy is like, you don't want to be like a cow grazing in the field, working 12 hours a day, not getting anything done. You kind of want to be more like a, forget the exact analogy, but it's more like a, like a leopard or something. You know, you come out and you attack and you hunt and that's when you get your work done. And then the rest of the time you're sort of resting and recuperating and thinking and brainstorming. But then the attack part is like, it's not all day. And so you want to be optimizing for energy, health and attacking your work again really sound philosophy. But what I found was that I wasn't getting as much done as I would like, and I wasn't getting myself into these states of focus as often as I would like. It started to feel kind of lazy. And that's when I came across the work of Nier, N-I-R. Uh, and I think that is, uh, I pronounce his name by the way, it's just the last name, Eyal or Ayal. A few moments later. E-Y-A-L. And, um, when I came across his work, uh, I came across it because I saw that he was doing some work, a course with Mind Valley, and I've done some work with Mind Valley as well. I did an interview with them, and they turned that into like a sort of you know program, or, or not a program, but like a a premium video that people can access through a certain membership, I guess. And um, I was like, okay, cool. He's done some work with Mind Valley too, and uh, what's this all about? And I found that. His whole philosophy was the complete opposite. He has this idea of time boxing your calendar. Every minute scheduled in these blocks of chunks of time. And I tried that before too, where everything was scheduled, but I constantly felt like my calendar was slipping, that I wasn't sticking to it. And when I wasn't sticking to it, I felt guilty. And then I felt like when it was time to show up for that block of time, I had a specific task and a to-do list that I needed to, to get through. And I constantly felt like shit because I wasn't completing all the tasks. 
And that's where Nir comes in because he thinks that the to-do list is like the worst idea ever. And he doesn't just think that, he points to a lot of productivity science that proves that the to-do list is not beneficial. It hurts us emotionally, um, cognitively, and it makes us feel like shit uh, because it, it never it never ends, right? And so the whole idea here is to show up, to have a life in a calendar where you just show up and you aren't measuring success by what you get done. You're measuring it based on your ability to show up consistently for that designated item that you've assigned yourself on your calendar. Now, I've been doing this for two weeks, not even two weeks, and it's been amazing. Now, a little early in my own anecdotal subjective sort of analysis and experimentation, but it feels really good. Now, I'm gonna be careful because I know every time I try something new, it generally feels good in the beginning. But this feels different because it's been a couple weeks and it feels sustainable because I haven't felt like shit. I haven't been like having that talk with myself where I'm like, you know, the not good enough thing. And instead, I'm measuring myself on, did I show up? Did I follow what was on my calendar? And even if I just show up and I only get done a one out of 10 or two out of 10, it's that consistency at showing up, and by the way, the most important part of this time box calendar method is that it's based on your priorities for yourself. What do you value? What is important to you? What are your priorities? And now this part, I've always been very good about. I am pretty good about not being overly reactive to my environment. Now that doesn't mean I don't just like get into that mode sometimes, I definitely do, especially when you're running a company there's a million things being thrown at you, and it's like da, 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 da. <laughs> machine gun style, just getting back to people, firing off, and I definitely have a personality that moves at a very fast speed, and I work really fast, and I'm very reactive, but um, when you sit down, and you look at your life, and you say, well, the most important thing is my health, so what are the activities on a daily, weekly basis I should be doing for my health, whether that's a certain bedtime, certain way you sleep, going for exercise, whatever that might be. And it does come down to that. Generally, it's like exercise and nutrition. So making sure you have time for lunch and it's a healthy lunch, making sure you're going for that morning run and you're doing your Pilates or whatever it is you want to do. So those things come first. Then come relationships, love. Like what is life without relationships and love? Do I spend time with the people I want to spend time with? Am I going on my date nights? Am I hanging out with my friends? Am I seeing my parents? Am I calling my parents? If, you, if they're still around and you're that lucky, it's like, great, beautiful, making time for that. And then comes your work. But the work stuff should be based on, well, what's your priority? You know, your priority. What is the thing that really moves the needle in your business? And ideally, you're setting your own OKRs, objectives and key results, each quarter, uh, planning, essentially, your year, your quarter, to make sure that you have these uh, set of goals, or I call them rocks, that are in line with your North Star goal. So it's like you start with the end in mind, right? My goal is to uh, build my company to have 1 million customers or 1 million website visitors by the end of the year. Okay, great. What does that look like on a quarterly basis? And then what are the three goals per quarter to get there? And then you reverse engineer that. And then you go, okay, cool. Well, on a weekly basis, what do I need to do in order to get there? Oh, okay, cool. That's what moves the needle. And those are the things that I should prioritize. And then you protect at all costs that time. Now stick with me because I'm getting to the flow part. Then once you have designed your life and your calendar, to do that, the reactive stuff comes in the time outside of that. And then you mark off time for uh, your inboxes and clearing those out each day, just once a day, just once a day, maximum twice a day, 30 minutes, inbox time, you know, email time, getting back to people. Uh, and then you can have office hours or free time or whatever it is to do all the other busy work that's bullshit. But you got to do it. You got to do it. So you set aside time for that. Now, what happens when you start to 
live and work this way is you start to get very focused because you have to have a like a very sacred level of respect for what is on the calendar at that time. And when it's time to show up for that and you show up, the next thing you got to do, of course, according to many of the experts, is clear all distractions. My computer, if possible, Wi-Fi off. Wi-Fi off is the best thing ever. There are apps for this if you don't trust yourself. I think one of them is called Freedom. Um, at least put it into do not disturb mode. Phone, airplane mode is a way of life. I love it. Or do not disturb, but do not disturb is not really good enough because you can still do things and get distracted. Or the Forest app, which is the best thing ever on your phone that uh, es essentially eliminates uh, that, you know, is a gamified way to help you stay focused, not open apps. Uh, it's very cool. Check it out. Forest. You do all these things. There's more you can do. There's uh, rituals. I was talking to David Moldauer in the most recent episode, number 76, about book publishing and the creative process, the writing process. And, you know, he talks about having a sort of anchor every time he wants to sit down to write. These are important things. There's a special thing he has that he puts on to make sure that his posture is aligned. It's a trigger. It's a mental trigger. There's another person that he studied that talks about having this blue, the color blue is her trigger, blue uh, shawl, scarf that she wears every time she sits down to write. You can come up with your own cool things. And this is where superstition, I think, is actually kind of cool and helpful. It's why athletes are superstitious, right? Because they're like, this is what triggers me to, to focus. And it also triggers them to go back to that place where they perform their best. Now, you've showed up here uh, according to your schedule. You're prioritized. It's what's important to you. You've cleared your distractions. Your phone's in airplane mode. Your computer doesn't have a thousand tabs open. You're ready to go. You show up and what you find is that, and you may strike out seven times, but eventually you find a level of focus, okay? And when you start to focus, because there's nothing else to do, that's the best part. If you truly clear your distractions, there's nothing else to do. Don't give yourself anything else to do. You know, you can sit there and twiddle your thumbs, but you got to put your, as Stephen Pressfield says, put your ass in the chair. <laughs> like just, that's what you got to do. Same time every day, put your ass in the chair. And if nothing comes out, that's fine. But give yourself a very small goal, right? Say you're a writer. We keep going to the writing thing. You're writing a book. 200 words. 200 words a day. That's what you have to do during that time. 200 words is like two paragraphs. It's very manageable. Now, you show up, you feel a level of focus, and what follows is flow. That feedback loop of the flow and the focus and the flow and the focus is so addictive and beautiful and glorious that it will keep you coming back. And it will keep you in that state. It's a very meditative state. And if you can stay there, you will find that time dilates and you'll lose track of it. And you won't give a fuck about anything else. And you just want to sit there and bathe in that flow. And the result of that is that hours and hours and hours can go by and the most beautiful work can come through you. So I highly, highly recommend making this a priority and investing in yourself to optimize for these states. One of the ways in which I think also a tool that is very helpful is take my elements personality test assessment. So valuable to know who you are and put language to it. And the entire personality test was designed for everything I just said with this in mind to optimize for focus and flow. Because once you know who you are and we're all completely different, but there are patterns that when we put language to help us make these elusive, these elusive things about our personality concrete and tangible. And if you have that self-knowledge that 
I'm the type that gets easily distracted, or I'm the type that needs space to think, or I'm the type that needs order and focus, order and structure and balance, blah, blah, or an incentive, or uh, to break the project apart into little pieces or big pieces. This is all personality. And this is all based in Carl Jung's work in psychological types and personality. When you go to that level and you do this, it makes this, you know, this process of going and finding focus much easier. And it makes the process of getting into flow much more likely. So I highly recommend you do that. Um, you can check that out at, I'll put a link below. Um, you can go to asadi, my last name, dot me forward slash elements, right? Like, 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 you know, the sixth element, the fifth element, the movie, just asadi.me forward slash elements, and that'll take you there. And um, yeah, I think that if you enjoyed this as well, uh, let me know because I can go much deeper on these pro on these uh, on these topics. I think that's a good place to end. Um, do the thing if you enjoy this. It helps me out if you click the little thumbs up on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up and share. Share this video with a friend. Share this episode with with a friend if you're on the podcast. And uh, make sure you subscribe. That also helps. And ding the little, hit the little bell. Because the little bell makes me happy when you hit the little bell. <laughs> All right, that's it. Until next time. Peace, one love.